about any literature. There are no strong feelings about the literature. He goes on to say that uh, not only uh, are there no strong feelings about the literature and the quotes and the scholars, white scholars that they've used, but he goes on to say that there's no piece of evidence anywhere that is really pure or strong enough or infallible. They must throw out everything they presented here tonight. I don't make the same claim. He actually refutes everything that they attempted to represent here tonight. None of you can deny the undeniable and indisputable and irrefutable fact, proof, and logic that you have been faced with here tonight. He went on to say that God can take on many forms. If he can take on many forms, then that is exactly what I have said. Then that would make him man, and that would make him woman. Would, how many in the audience would agree with that? But again, I want to drive the point home. Psalms 82 says, you are gods, all of you, children of the Most High God. You have a higher divine godly self, and you have a lower material matter self, and a weaker self. The two work together for the common good, divine good of the whole. I never said here tonight that God is so limited until he needs total unity before he can manifest his power. I said well, that the time will come and prophecy has shown us that, that God is not the author of confusion but the author of peace. And that Satan the devil will have a period to rule. Jake agrees that the devil is ruling now. He's in the White House. He's in the Vatican. He's in the Church of England. He's at the head of the white Protestant movement. He's at the head of the Catholic movement. He is at the head of all of the white false religious world systems that have been established and the head of the false political systems that have been established throughout the world that the book of Revelation talks about. God, I contend, is not spirit alone, but God is spirit man and woman. God in the person of man and woman. If you do not have communion and communication, if you do not have the God power in you, then you have absolutely no connection with the universal divine supreme ruler and creator that they talked about in their earlier definitions and contentions for us. Let's go a little further and look at this. As we look carefully at it, we will find, brothers and sisters and ladies and gentlemen, that this is a very clear subject. For those who say God is man and not spirit, you make a big mistake. And those who say God is spirit and not man, either way, you make a big mistake. I know the scripture says God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit, but it goes on to say, and in truth. And so if you're going to do it in truth, you cannot separate the two. The two are directly divinely connected and you cannot separate them. When you pray, and you pray, you understand that there is always a power in you and it is the God power in you that always directs you to do good and to do right. You may ignore the voice of God that calls to you. You may ignore God's warning and admonition inside of you, but God inside of you always is directing you. You may go against it, but the guidance is there. There is no mystery God sitting somewhere remote a God too high in the sky and a devil too low under the ground. Some devil under the ground with red panty holes on and a pitchfork that's going to stick you and jig you on a barbecue pit forever in an eternal hell. God is real and the devil is real and they emanate from the very soul, fiber, and being of man and woman. Don't let anyone fool you. Jake is not fooled, Joe is not fooled, Laura is not fooled, don't you be a fool.
Well, I guess you'll have to make up your mind for yourself. Uh, what we'd like to do now is open up the floor for questions and answers. Those of you who have questions for Dr. Collett and the panel from Seattle University, we'd like you to stand and pose your questions in an orderly fashion. Yes, sir. The only confusion I have being white is what role is there uh, for a white person? I mean, I have the sense that that uh, we all are so individually incapable of seeing the light. Am I being too defensive? Well, I think you said it quite well. I do hear some defensiveness, but I would like to say, sir, that we believe that everything very quickly that we read of in scripture of evil that is taking place on the face of the planet Earth, we believe that white people are at the root of it. If it is war, no one has fought more major wars than white people. You've killed millions of people on the face of the planet Earth. The number one murderer, the number one robber, the number one lyncher, the number one enslaver, the number one liar on the face of the planet Earth. So, excuse me, so this is not to uh, be disrespectful in any way, we're just dealing with it as it is. If we're saying drugs are the problem, crack is not the problem in Seattle, Tacoma. The problem is not with the crack, the problem is with the cracker. That's who the problem is with. The crack is coming in on trucks and trains and boats and planes. You know you don't even have a canoe to bring any in. It would not get in unless the white man wanted it in the black community. The same way he did the Indians with drugs and wagon loads of fire water and whiskey so that the Indians would fight and kill each other. It was the white man who gave them wagon loads of ammunition and guns so that when they got high or drunk, the Indians would kill each other and now the white man is the ruler of the land that used to belong to the Indians. One last point, sir. Of all of the laws in the state penal code system and federal penal code system of America, White people broke every one of those laws in order to establish America. Strong arm robbery, arm robbery, cold-blooded, premeditated, first-degree murder, kidnapping, kidnapped millions of our people. You wouldn't be here at, the, at Seattle University tonight, black people, if you hadn't been kidnapped 400 years ago. The black woman raped during slavery. All of the laws that are on the books today that white people will put you in prison for or give you the death penalty or corporal punishment for, they broke those laws in order to establish America. So the manifestation, the clearest manifestation of evil on the face of the planet Earth is among the white race. Black people have become a people who are doing evil things by learned behavior. You put the cigarettes in their hand. You put the guns in their hand. You put the dope in their hands. You make the beer, the whiskey, the wine, the alcohol. And so all of these things I say uh, as humbly as I can, and this is the burden that whites carry. Does this mean that you are doomed? I don't know. The question is, are you any better today than your fathers were yesterday. If you're willing to make the change today, then perhaps, I, it is not on me, then perhaps God might forgive you. I don't know. But he says in the scripture that he would judge you all the way up to the third and the fourth generation. That he would judge all of them from Abel all the way to Zechariah of those who were the murderers of the saints and the prophets. So, that's my statement on your question, sir. You have a second part to that? Well, this fact. The logic leads to everything evil. Can you say 
Now that is a racist term, possibly. Let me. What by black? What is white? What is black? Let me. Let me. Let me speak to that for a moment. Which country is your wife from? From Colombia. We believe that the people who are called from a racist terminology, Hispanic, listen to the term. She's our sister. She's not Hispanic, unless you're the his that we're talking about. She's not Hispanic. Hispanic among conscious brothers and sisters who are of the, who speak the Spanish language today, which is not their original language, it was imposed on them. The Incas were destroyed and their ranks decimated. The white Spaniard from Southern Europe came into what is called North America, South America, Central America, and colonized them and killed them and took their language from them and gave them the Spanish tongue, which is from Europe, and gave them a Spanish name and now calls them Hispanic. Hispanic is just as racist when you're referring to our brothers and sisters from that region as calling us Negro, colored, or nigger. And it is a term that Nixon helped popularize as Jesse Jackson is popular, popularizing African American now, and I'll speak to that if someone asks me about it a little later. I don't want to be named after a white man named America's Vespucci from Italy. So, it looks like you've married in the family. Maybe she could do something with you. Question, sister? Good question. You want to answer? No, I don't. I don't think I would be as calm. I don't think I would be as rational, and I don't think I would be able to deal with it as well as I've seen people deal with it today. I just what happened 400 years ago embarrasses me, sickens me, it makes me wish makes me wish in a lot of ways that I'd never been born because I carry so much shame. And no, I don't think I would talk the same way because I don't think that I could be that calm, that rational, and that, that I don't think I would be able to have my composure together as well as most of the people I've seen today. You know, I'd like to make a comment too right now. I, 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 I have a real problem with Lars. A statement like, huh? Oh, that's... When Lars is making a statement, you know, I think a little bit of an offense to people snickering and laughing in the audience. But, you know, if we're going to sit up here and, uh, and be in some sort of a position of uh, the oppressors, and we're at least willing to make an acknowledgement that uh, in the past there have been some sort of problems in the past. Do you know what I mean? To stand up here, you know, I won't pass out darts if you people want to throw them at me, but uh, I'm not going to listen to the people in the audience be little, at least an attempt of an acknowledgement of the destruction of mankind. Now, come on, let's be serious enough for we at least give an opportunity to talk on your side, or else you shouldn't even be asking the questions. Wow. I can make a call also towards the young lady. Uh, I would ask you, which is it easier to be a proud of? Would, it, would you be more proud if your father was a thief or a victim? Obviously, it's my belief, you have more to be proud of as a victim than as an aggressor. <laughs> exactly. But, however, I, I think you make a great mistake, if not greater than original intent, when you, when you make a connection between generations and cultures which transgresses uh, 
excuse me? Sisters, ladies and gentlemen, let's be orderly and respectful. Respect ourselves. Say what you have to say, but be respectful or orderly in terms of, you know, not speaking. But we want to, I mean, we want to have some spirit, you know. Got to have some flavor. That's right. Spice. Sister is not done. Joe. 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 is worthless and I understand it's probably offensive when I smile at you but I smile at everybody I meet it's a general expression of goodwill okay I mean I'm sorry if that's offensive from now on I won't I, if that's such a bad thing my family was oppressed too they had to leave Europe because they were Polish Jews okay and that's no fun either and if I went to Europe I would be oppressed it's not the same it's not the same at all. And there's no way that I can say that I understand what you feel. And there's no way that anything I say as far as an apology can make up for what's happened. But I do the best that I can. And I understand it doesn't mean anything to you. But it's all that I can do. I do everything I can so that I can go to sleep at night and I can live with myself. And trust me, it's hard. I work real hard. My family didn't own any slaves. My family moved here and worked their butts off, okay? And I'm sorry that my apology doesn't mean anything to you. But I don't have anything to give. Oh. Let me make this point. In the new book, The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, it points out she'll be all right. She'll be absolutely all right. In the book, The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, it is pointed out, you gonna stay, Joe? Oh, okay. It is pointed out the role that the people who are called Jews today played in the slave trade, in the African Holocaust. We haven't just gone through a Holocaust, we paid a hell of a cost. For Jake to say there have been a few, in words, little problems in the past, please give me a break to go and hold the onions. I mean, this doesn't make sense. The condition, according to the Kerner Commission report, the presidential report that was done over 20 years ago, said that the number one problem in America is white racism. That's the Kerner Commission report. 20 years later, it said there were two Americas, one black, one white, separate and unequal. Give her a hand. They dealt with the Kerner Commission report follow-up 20 years later today. 
And they found that the conditions that black people faced 20 years ago, according to this presidential commission, that those conditions are worse today than they were 20 years ago. That's right. Look at it. Angel Food Cake Center right here. Angel Food Cake is white in white society. Devil's Food Cake is black. You wear white to weddings, black to funerals. It's all right, buddy, to tell a lie. As long as it's a little white lie. Not only that, if a black cat crosses your path, you're told that's bad luck. Some of you will run all the way to Tacoma to keep a black cat from crossing the path or the bad one of the family. I'm not talking about the rap group. It's either this or that. It's either this or that. I'm the voice that you hear on Public Enemy's album, Fight the Power. They say right after Flav, and Flav, right after Flav, you know Flav, after Flav does, she watched Channel Zero. And before Chuck D comes in with this is a dope jam, the voice that you hear that says, have you forgot that when we were brought here, we were robbed of our name, robbed of our language. We lost our religion, our culture, our God, and many of us, by the way we act, we even lost our mind. That is the condition that black people are in. Let me say this. It is not the same to be a Polish Jew driven from Europe and to land or an Irishman or one of the other so-called immigrants and land at Ellis Island in New York City. It is quite different when you come in the holes of ships stacked and packed like sardines in a can and like cockroaches in a coke bottle. When you're stripped of all human qualities, that's not the same. We didn't come as immigrants. We didn't come voluntarily. Right. We came to be made burden bearers for white America and to build America for the white man. Right. These are realities. The Statue of Liberty means nothing to us. Right. The Statue of Liberty is nothing but a whore in the harbor holding her torch. Holding her torch, ready to pull up her dress and shine the light so the ships can come in and out from all of the harbors and nations of the earth. America started by separating from England because they said it was taxation without representation and that was tyranny. We have over 8,000 black elected public officials today. We have less power today than we had when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was here. My point, brothers and sisters, as I close out and take the other questions, is that we must understand the point for this debate tonight was, of course, to bridge that gap between God and man and woman. That's what I hoped to do, so that you wouldn't see God as some other world creator, some outside cabinet of self-creator, then that means that you have no real connection and that you have no power to change your circumstance and your condition. But when you know that you are connected to him, then you are in position to do that. It was also to point out in religion white racism. You can't even shoot a game of pool without a white ball on the table knocking the hell out of the black ball, the brown ball, the orange ball, and all the balls of color. And the worst ball on the pool table is the eight ball, the black ball on the table. Everywhere we go, racism stares us in the face. And the church is no different. When you walk in the church, if we talk to Laura, if we talk to Joe, Joe, you're Catholic. The Catholic Church all over the world, the majority of them have a white Mary, a white Jesus, and white angels, except the early churches in Europe where they still bow down and make their prayers in front of a black Mary and a black Jesus and make pilgrimages, white people, at different key points throughout Europe. But the majority of the Catholic churches have all white images. Is that right or wrong? And most of the Protestant churches have all white images, and you as black as you are,
some of you are so beautiful and black until you are blacker than 150 million midnights. <laughs> Hair so nappy and beautiful until it looks like a million black power fists standing up on top of your beautiful head. And you sit up in a church with a white Jesus and a white man and you wonder why our condition never changes. <laughs> Sister in the middle here was next. Uh, I, I want to ask you. Look at uh, the fact that the black woman is no longer on the county. Some of you didn't have to come in black. You know, we learned that in school, too. What school did I go to? I went to high school. I'm going to see other I've had some quality history professors. Maybe you didn't have some. I've had some in high school. Check them out. why we're up here having a debate. This, this is, became completely out of scope, and I have nothing here to disagree with. So I am questioning why we're here. Thing, just in a different form. So if you would have thought about that, 
then you see that positive and negative right there. All right, then you know that we are positive if we come first. Mm -hmm. What about we come back? <laughs> I, I think you brought up a good point there. And the first, the first phase of this race, we have white domination and white prejudice. And now we're encountering his viewpoint, which is promoting black domination and black dominance. And that, do two lines make a right? I would like to ask you. Okay. Now let me move on to the next. Let me, let me, let me deal with that for a sec. The question was, do, do, do two wrongs make a right? We're not dealing with two wrongs here. You know, you have some groups who say, let's take down all of the white images because they are wrong, but don't put up any images. 